And now I invite you to hear joyously the Easter gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Later, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. He is risen. He is risen. Indeed. He is risen. This is not what we expected today, is it? Easter is supposed to be the day that we gather in worship, and then we head off and have a great brunch made by our youth, and then we go gather with our friends and family, and we watch young children gather Easter eggs. This is the day where these seats in the sanctuary would have been filled with hundreds of people gathered together, and our choirs would have been singing the Alleluia Chorus, and we would have all come to church dressed in our Sunday best with big smiles on our faces, and this pastor at least would have had a haircut for the day. <laughs> but no one could have imagined this kind of a day. And the same is true for our disciples today in our gospel reading. There were no celebrations. There were no alleluia praises on that first Easter morning. In fact, Jesus' disciples were gathered in homes and they were filled with confusion. Jesus' disciples had locked themselves behind closed doors and they were terrified because they were afraid of the unknown and they were full of fear. They were in shock. How could this have happened? Jesus was the man who had changed their lives in his transformational teaching and healing. He was the one who called himself the Son of Man and he had come to make everything new. He was the king who would liberate them from religious and political persecution. But he was dead. The Roman Empire crucified him on the cross as an example of what happens to people when they dare question the empire. What were they supposed to do now that Jesus was gone? Would the Jesus haters come and find them and do to them what they had done to Jesus? So they locked themselves inside of their homes because they were afraid, because they didn't know what would happen next. Mary Magdalene was grief stricken, and she had the same kind of fear. As she made her way to the grave that morning with tear-stained cheeks to prepare Jesus' body for burial. When she got there, the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, and when she looked inside, it was empty. And she did not shout hallelujah, and she did not dance dances of celebration. No, she waited out the side of the tomb in terror, and she wept. She was full of fear. 
consumed with grief on this Easter Sunday, we too are locked behind our doors, afraid of the unknown with all kinds of questions. What are we supposed to do now? What are we supposed to believe now? How do we make sense out of what we are living? We start by remembering the promise of Easter. Did not Mary and the disciples remember what Jesus had told them when he was alive? Did they not witness that this man could make the blind see and the paralyzed walk and the dead rise? Do we not remember what Jesus has told us, that he came that we might have life and have it abundantly? Do we not remember that Jesus said that Jesus is the light of the world and darkness cannot overcome him? Do we not believe that Jesus said that he would have to suffer and die, but on the third day rise again? Or do we believe the lies? Do we believe that our God is a vengeance-seeking, sin-counting God who only wants to punish us and only wants our sacrifice? Do we believe that this virus is a way for God to punish us and teach us a lesson? If we believe these lies, then we believe in a God of retribution, not mercy. If we believe in these lies, then we believe that God causes suffering instead of creating healing. If we believe these lies, then we believe that God is a God of death, not life. Easter proclaims that we have a God of life and that God is not done. I know this because the grave could not hold all of Jesus in death and hell and sin. And guess what? The grave cannot hold you in death and sin and hell any longer. There isn't and wasn't a locked door that Jesus cannot go through to be with his disciples or to be with us. There isn't a tomb that he cannot stand outside of and speak Mary's name or our name. There isn't a virus or an illness that can keep God from coming to you and for you because we have a God who isn't done yet. God is a God of life. And God is not in the business of making you and I good or nice or pious. No, God is in the business of making you and I new. This is the God who freed the Israelites from slavery. This is the God who tore down the walls of Jericho. This is the God who became flesh and lived among us. And this is the God who had the audacity to eat with people others thought were unclean and to eat with prostitutes and speak with Samaritans and make the dead rise. You see, God did not stop at Jesus' resurrection because God is not done yet and God is in the business of taking all of the dead things in our lives and making them new. And new looks like healing after abuse. And new looks like an addict getting clean. And new looks like forgiveness. And new looks like doctors and nurses and researchers staring down at a virus and saying, not today on my watch. No, not today. Not today. And new looks like people worshiping in their homes to protect the most vulnerable. And new looks like every time you and I choose love over fear. 
Last week, I visited a young woman in our congregation who is dying of cancer. As if cancer isn't isolating enough, now with the coronavirus, the ability for her family to visit her is limited. Her family and her have done everything humanly possible. And her oncologists have done everything humanly possible. And we have prayed for physical healing. This is cosmically unfair. Where are you, Jesus? I thought. She is a beautiful person with young children and a loving husband. And they've done everything. But where I saw only the tomb, she sees Jesus. As I broke the bread and I gave her the wine and we discussed life and faith, she said that she saw Jesus in the birth of her children, in the love of her husband, in the faith that her family had passed on to her. And she saw Jesus reaching into her locked door, into her illness, and reminding her that he was present with her all the time. And even though she was not going to receive physical healing, she was at peace knowing that God was not done with her yet and would never be done with her. And God was not done with her family, nor would God ever be done with her family. She was standing outside of her tomb being a resurrection preacher to me. She was standing outside of the tomb like Mary stood outside of the tomb and said to Peter, I have seen the Lord. It may feel like Good Friday right now for all of us, but Easter is coming. God is not done and continues to reach through our locked doors into our fear, into our addictions, into our cancer, and into this virus and is loving all of us back to life because God is not done and God will never be done with us. So today, wherever you are at, whether you are at home or whether you are in the hospital, whether you are by yourself or whether you are with a few people, and whatever you're facing today in your life, hear this promise on Easter Sunday. Jesus is speaking your name, and Jesus says to you, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Again, I will build you. You will be built. Again, you will shake your tambourines and you will leave your houses. Again, you will dance and you will hug people that you love. Again, you will plant vineyards and gather in song because I am the God of life. I am not done. Amen. <laughs>